we've seen how thermodynamics incorporates the thermochemistry unit of study. It incorporates uh, uh, things like, like equilibrium and equilibrium constants. Oh, it's just amazingly good stuff. And now it incorporates the unit of study of electrochemistry, redox, reduction oxidation stuff. Because you know why? <laughs> Here's why. Because you know that the word spontaneous and non-spontaneous is directly linked to that unit of study where when we put chemicals together, if they produce a positive voltage or E naught or E value, then we've got a spontaneous reaction. Well, now let's incorporate that into thermodynamics and wrap it all up. <laughs> okay, here's what you know. The volt, well, maybe you don't know. I think I've described it before. The volts is actually joules per coulomb. It's energy divided by the, the amount of charge that passes through a certain location in a certain amount of time. That's a coulomb. Coulomb, well, that's, that's what an amperage is, really. A coulomb is a unit of charge. And if you divide the unit of charge into the amount of energy produced, that's what a volt is. Okay, right. Well, hey, we also substitute E for V, don't we? Because you know that an E naught value is just a voltage, right? Well, that equals, well, that's work, but it's the amount of work or energy that's released because it's useful work, right? Oh, here it comes. It's useful work, so we put a negative in front of the work here to say that that's how much work we can produce, right? Divided by Q, which is charge. Hey, we can rearrange this formula to make this. And you know what we know about Q, which is a unit of charge? It actually equals Faraday's constant, which is in coulombs per mole, multiplied by a number of moles. And so NF gives you charge. And so when we take this and we recognize that the amount of useful work that can produ be produced is also now called delta G, delta G equals NFE. Oh man, what does that mean? That means that if we know the voltage of a cell and we multiply by Faraday's constant times the number of moles of electrons exchanged between, in the half reactions, between the oxidizing and reducing agent, then we can calculate the delta G value and really specifically tell if a reaction is spontaneous or not. We could tell that anyway, right? Because here's what you know. Hey, and, and by the way, we know E naught values because those E naught values are given to us on charts, right? And remember that left over right on the chart means spontaneous, means you're going to have a positive E naught value. If that's positive and Faraday's constant is always a positive value and the number of moles of electrons is always positive, then this whole thing is negative. And if you've got a positive cell voltage, you have a negative delta G, which means spontaneous. Right, of course. So, here's the deal. If we have an E naught value, that gives us a, G, a delta G naught value as well. So if I say to you, hey, here's a zinc copper cell and, and here's the reaction for it. Well, you know, if you take zinc ions and you put a P to <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Watch what I'm going to do. Because if you take copper ions, copper solution, and add zinc metal to it, you can actually produce, of course, zinc ions and copper in a spontaneous reaction. That will give you a left over right on the chart and a voltage of 1.10 volts. And if somebody says calculate the delta G value for that, you just take that value and recognize that volts is joules per coulomb times Faraday's constant, 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs per mole of electrons, times, now what's the number of electrons exchanged? Well, the zinc half reaction has two electrons that are being lost. The copper has two electrons being gained. The exchange is two, right? And so that's the number that goes in for N. That's the two. And remember, now here's the thing. If one half reaction had, had four electrons in it, the other had one, you have to multiply this half reaction that had one electron in it by four, right? To get four gained and four lost. So that's where the N would be four. If it was three electrons in one half reaction and two in another, you know that you'd have to have six electrons exchanged. Multiply the one by three by two and the one by two by three to get six electrons exchanged. The number of moles of electrons exchanged you put in there for N would be six. Anyway. When you do this math right here, you get negative 2.12 times 10 to the 5 joules. And that means 
that's a spontaneous reaction and it releases a lot of workable energy. Yeah, no kidding, because remember, we can take these half reactions, add them together, spontaneous reactions, and we can make batteries out of them, and that provides a lot of useful energy, and we can calculate how much. Ha! Ah.